Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Bing Crosby and Anne Blythe in The Emperor Waltz. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Undoubtedly, the outstanding personality in the entertainment world today is our star tonight, Bing Crosby. First in song, first on the screen, and first in the hearts of his fellow Americans. Bing is here to bring you one of his greatest paramount hits, The Emperor Waltz. With Bing, we present the lovely Anne Blythe as his co-star in this lively, romantic story of old Vienna. It's pure entertainment from the moment the American traveling salesman meets the beautiful countess until they both meet a happy ending. And, of course, it's full of the songs that delighted film audiences everywhere. You know, it's the audience that makes a picture a success. And it's the same way with a product like Lux Toilet Soap. Famous for years as the complexion care of beautiful women, Lux Soap has now made another hit with a big bath size. And here's the signal for the curtain to rise on The Emperor Walt, starring Bing Crosby as Virgil Smith and Anne Blythe as the Countess. <laughs> Vienna, some 40-odd years ago. In the study of his palace, Emperor Franz Joseph has just received some visitors. General von Stolzenberg Stolzenberg, his daughter, the Countess Johanna, and his daughter's dog, a French poodle named Scheherazade. Come in, General, come in. Don't stand there. Sit down. Hey, Your Majesty. My dear Johanna, sorry I can't kiss your hand. Bad cold, full of germs. Oh, how are you, Scheherazade? What pretty ribbons you're wearing today. <laughs> well, General... You know why I've sent for you? Well, if it's about that girl at the opera house, I definitely did not promise her the lead in Aida. Girl? Opera house? Now what have you done? Me? But, but Your Majesty, I merely... You'd better be quiet, Father, before you really give yourself away. I sent for you, Your Honor, to discuss a marriage. Marriage? But Your Highness... The Russian I... Duke, sire? The one with all the money? Don't be absurd. A match, Your Honor, that means a great deal to me. I've given it infinite thought, my dear. Studied the bloodlines on both sides. One could not ask for better. Oh, thank you, sire. I've raised Joanna to realize that blood comes first. What pleases me most is that both lines are prolific. Pro... Prolific, Your Majesty? I anticipate superb offsprings. Oh, it will warm my old heart to see the little things crawling about. <laughs> great honor, a great honor. If there are five, I shall want three. Is that asking too much? Your Majesty... Now, don't quibble. If it'll give the Emperor any happiness to I have... think the union should be brought about as rapidly as possible. You see, spry as he is, the bridegroom is rather an elderly gentleman. How... How old, Your Majesty? Twelve. Twelve. But what possible difference is in... Twelve? On the 7th of September. Now, I suggest that the nuptials take place in my kennels. Kennels? With all that barking going on? Oh, Father, the Emperor is talking about the poodles. His Majesty's dog, Louis, is asking for the paw of Scheherazade in marriage. Well, I... <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> uh, I'm no fool. Scheherazade, did you hear? You're engaged. <laughs> My dog, Louie, and I will expect you tomorrow at my hunting lodge in the mountains. We're most honored, Your Majesty. Yeah, think of it, Your Honor. Why, we... Oh, forgive me, Your Majesty, but you must take cover at once, sire, at now once. Now what's going on? There's an assassin in the palace. The captain of the guard says he's got a bomb. Oh, dear, this constant hiding gets to be such a bore. Don't be alarmed, Your Majesty. We're closing in on the villain right now. He's surrounded down there in the courtyard. Hey, hey, now, hey, wait, break it up. What's the matter? Release the fabric here. What are you trying to do? What's the big idea? How come you guys want to chase me out of the palace? I got a pass. See? Signed here by the Royal Chamberlain. We've got him, Lieutenant. You can call off the cavalry. You crazy or something? And what'd you do with my box? And let go of my dog, you dog, you. 
Never mind, Buttons. We'll file suit first thing in the morning. Captain. Captain, we dropped the box in the pond, but it may still explode. Oh, is this the Emperor's Palace or a loony bin? Or where am I? This pass. Virgil H. Smith, eh? Yeah. It says here you came as a potentate. Mm-hmm. Well, are you a potentate? Well, I may have stretched things a little, but I'm a Shriner, all right. Dues paid up through January. <laughs> You're an anarchist. That's what you are. I am not. I'm a Presbyterian. <laughs> Another lie. It says here you're a salesman. Let's a have wobble salesman. face. Isn't it possible for a guy to be a Presbyterian Shriner potentate salesman? Now you're trying to. I am also me. a registered Democrat, a junior member of the Chamber of Commerce, a sand layup third <laughs> nurse. So I, go no. left... I got to talk fast. If I don't, my sample's going to rust in that fush fish pond. Yes, sir, where you are. Fush fish. You got it's me all upset. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> got the thing there that's no bomb. I never saw such a bunch of ignoramuses. What's the matter with you, anyhow? Bomb. Look, I'll get the box out of the water myself. Will that help you? I'll even open it myself. Maybe that'll convince you. Stand back, men. If it goes off, it'll save the expense of a hanging. Uh, look, look, he's winding it up the box. He's winding it. Well, it's a little damp, fellas, but it may still work now. I attach the little horn thusly. Horn? Oh, Why, that looks like an ear. Oh, trumpet. don't be silly. Okay, Buttons. Cock your head now. Hook in the horn. There you are, fellas. Well, don't you recognize the trademark? You don't get it, huh? You're all playing infield around here, I guess. Well, this box is an invention. It's a talking machine, a phonograph. A new kind of American thingamabob. Here, watch this. We have a record. We place it on the machine. We drop the needle, and we're in business. Here she goes, boys. Listen now. <laughs> Get yourself a phonograph, you'll get yourself a girl. When you start a record playing, introduce yourself by saying, let's twirl. Get yourself a phonograph, how can you ever miss? Let the needle help you wheedle a kiss. And when she hears the music, how romantic she'll become. A serenade that's ready-made for an insignificant sum. Get yourself a phonograph, just give the crank a whirl. It's a wonderful invention and attracts so much attention. And of course you heard me mention that you get yourself a girl. Well, there you are. Convinced? Doesn't convince you, huh? Well, let me back in the palace. I'm trying to see the emperor anyhow. He I can't has wait enough to... worries without listening to that. All right, Lieutenant. Turn the prisoner over to the royal chamber. It's all right, Your Majesty. You may come out now. Well, what was it this time? A false alarm, sire. An American salesman. Don't worry. I'll dispose of him immediately. Uh, uh, the dogs, Your Majesty. We were making the final arrangements. Scheherazade and I will leave in the morning, Your Majesty. Yeah, I'll escort them myself. And I may personally guarantee Your Highness a most glorious litter. I know it. I know you're the Royal Chamberlain. You're the boy who lined up the appointment for I me. I tell yes. you, we have changed our mind. Now, out the gate. Now, listen, listen. Steady, chubby. I came here to put my talking machine over, and I'm going to, you understand? I'm going to sell 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. Not in Austria, I oh, assure what you. what a bunch of dusty old aunties you got around here. Why, you wouldn't have put in electric lights, only the emperor did. And you wouldn't have bought an automobile, only the emperor did. Well, he's going to buy the first talking machine, you see, and he's going to endorse it. And when he does, you just watch the sales skyrocket. Ho, 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 up they go. One more word and you're under arrest. Viennese charm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Buttons. It's all right, all right. Tell you one thing, if you ever see me order Wiener Schnitzel again, you can spit in my eye. <laughs> hey, Button, here now, back here. Didn't say we had to run out. Oh, no, no, no. What's the matter? What's the matter with you, Button? Over there, boy? over there, that other dog, she belongs to the Countess. Call back your dog. Call him back. Hey, Buttons, hey, here. Yeah, Buttons, here, boy. Come on, boy, lay off the rough stuff now. You hear me? Here let now. Let her alone, you nasty hey, mother. Hey, hey, let her alone. I got it, Father. Oh, quick, get in the coach. Oh, my poor Scheherazade. Did he frighten you? Hey, hey, come back here. What'd you do to my dog? He's bleeding. Hey, stop. Who do these people think they are? They are His Excellency Baron General von Stolzenberg Stolzenberg and his daughter, the Countess. Yeah, well, where do they live? 
in the Stolzenberg, Stolzenberg Palace, and Stolzenberg, Stolzenberg Square, naturally. That's a lot of Stolzenberg, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> don't tell us to get out again, because we're getting. Come on, Buttons. Let's have a look at that paw. <laughs> You rang, sir? Yeah. Does a black dog live here? I beg your pardon. A French yeah. poodle, black, about so big. You tell her she's got to see a man about a dog. It's all right, Franz. I'll dispose of him myself. There they are, Button. There they are, both Kindly of them. keep that animal on its leash. <laughs> Sit down, Scheherazade, dear. What's the idea of just running off before down there? You saw what happened. Your dog bit my dog. Your dog annoyed my dog, and take off your hat. Look at his paw. Gee, it bled for half an hour all over my rented suit. Don't let him upset you, darling. What is it you want, money? I want a saliva test. I want it right now. A what? Saliva test. Your dog may be mad. That silly-looking beast might have the rabies. Oh, thank you not to use such vile words when you talk about her. Well, have you watched her lately for symptoms? Has she been frothing at the mouth? Has her bark sounded crucial? My dear man, my veterinarian goes over Scheherazade twice a week from snout to tail. Oh, listen, any mutt can get and rabies, And stop you know. referring to her as a mutt. Have you ever heard of bloodlines? Hers goes back to the 18th century. Huh. Buttons goes back to as far as they've been having dogs. <laughs> her father belonged to the Tsar of Russia. Oh, you don't say. Her mother to the Infanta of Spain. Well, Buttons' ma belongs to a milkman in Jersey City, and his oh. father... Oh, well, his father, you got me there, huh? <laughs> Furthermore, Scheherazade has just become betrothed to the dog of his emperor, Franz Joseph. Yeah? Well, Button's brother helps a kid named Stinky O'Hara deliver newspapers, and his sister was making an honest living as a watchdog until she had a little run-in with the Jersey Central Railroad. How really fascinating. If your poodle is so darn classy, how come she doesn't know better than to go around biting a nice little dog like Button's? Gee, all he did was go up to her and say, how do you do? Yes, thrusting his ugly, ill-bred little face right into hers. And for that she bit him? Certainly. And she was right? Well, there are such things as class distinction, you know. If the low-bred has the impertinence to come so distastefully close, well... What can he expect but to be bitten? Oh, is that so? It is. Okay, let's see. You kissed me. Yeah. Now go ahead, bite me. <laughs> well, what do you got to yap about? I told you what happened. The emperor's up here in the mountains. See, it said so in the newspaper. If we're going to sell him a talking machine... <laughs> Well, I thought you'd like it up here, all these trees and things. You there. there. Where are you going? Why? What's the matter? Road closed? Or it something? is to you. These grounds where the emperor goes hunting. Oh, oh, he's hunting now, huh? His majesty hunts only in the morning. But right here in the woods, huh? He goes down this road and through the gorge. And no spectators. And no spectators. I heard you the first time. Your first time. <laughs> hey, Buttons. Get a load of that echo. La, la, la. La, la, la. Lo, 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 lo. Lo, 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 lo. Oh, aren't those wonderful acoustics? What do you say, Buttons? Let's hit them with the full treatment, huh? Yo, 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 Dum dum da 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 di, bum ba, di 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 ho, bum bum, bum bum. If you feel a song, then let the song begin, and you'll find the friendly mountains joining in, joining in. Joining in, joining in. Loosen up your pipes, and brother, you can bet it's as pretty as a barber shop quartet. Quartet, 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 quartet. Say you take the lead, and you think you're all alone, but you find. You've got a tenor, bass, and baritone. Tenor, bass, and baritone. You can raise. 
We're almost there, Shahrazad. Don't be impatient. I tell you, Your Honor, the dog's not well. Just feel her nose. Nonsense. She's running a temperature. Don't be hysterical. Hysterical. Don't you realize what this means to me? What if she gets a cold or distemper? Oh, heaven forbid. Oh, all right. Let's rest for a moment. Stop here, driver. Yes, madame. Ah, oh, just breathe this delicious air, Shahrazad. <laughs> Well, what's the matter? Well, what is it? She's but running away. Shahrazad! Shahrazad! Hustle up a song. Huh? Well, what's eating you? What's the matter, Buttons? Hey, hey now, the song ain't that bad. Come back here. Here, boy. Hey, Buttons. Shahrazad! She's fighting. He's killing now, her. Now, Buttons, cut that out. Cut it out. You hear me? Let her alone. Call off your dog. Call him off. What's the matter with you, Buttons? Here, now. He, he, down, down, down there, boy. Quiet. This is. Why, first thing you know, you'll... Yoo-hoo. This is outrageous. Small world, huh? Are you following me? No. Are you? Why? Why, this is the same objectionable American, isn't it? I'll take care of him, Father. You take Scheherazade back to the coach. Oh, yes, yes. I'll give her some brandy. As for you, exactly what are you doing here? Well, they don't pay my expenses just to climb mountains and yodel. I'm here on business. Got to see the emperor. At his majesty's request? <laughs> Let's not get technical about it. Then how do you expect to see him? Oh, he's going to see me, or hear me, or rather he's going to hear my talking machine. Oh, really? Yeah, well, every day, you know, I find out he goes out coon hunting or something out here, and one of these fine mornings, I'll hide behind a tree or something, get my talking machine all set, and suddenly... And then? Well, once he gets a listen, it'll be a sense. He'll say, how come that beautiful doggone band is up here playing in these little bitty old doggone foothills of mine? That's what he'll say? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Uh huh. I shall pop out from behind my tree and I'll say, Imp, that's no band, that's a phonograph. Come on over here, see for yourself. Very clever. Only it won't work. Why not? Because you will not be hiding behind any tree. Huh. Because no tradesman can be allowed to presume on the Emperor of Austria. And because you're going straight back to the inn, pack your things and leave immediately. You and that miserable dog of yours. Well, who's going to make us? The police. Like funny. Well, I'm an American citizen. He's an American dog. I got a passport. He's got a dog license. And if you don't leave voluntarily, I'll see that they throw you out. Now, you try anything like that and you're going to get into a peck of trouble. Don't you forget that Teddy Roosevelt still carries a big stick. Who carries what? You start a mad with me, he'll have the Rough Riders over here so fast make your head swim, boy. Hey, you... You honor... Get back here at once. Your hair is on his feet and, and the army will be here, too, and the Navy and the Marines, you understand? And don't forget, we're building a little thing called the Panama Canal. Just what are you raving You'll about? You'll find out soon enough when we won't let your ships through, not one of them. You'll have to go all the way down around South America, or else you'll have to go all the way up north where it's so darn cold that you... The first train out of here, you and your apparatus and that dog, especially that dog. Yeah, we'll fix you in Washington. Oh, <laughs> what we'll do to your ambassador... And we'll boycott your product. The Blue Danube forbidden by Act of Congress. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi, fellas. Oh, shut up with that stuff. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return with Act Two of The Emperor Wall. Now, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins, with interesting news for movie fans. They'll be glad to know, Mr. Keeley, that Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer has an important new picture. It's The Red Danube, an exciting story of post-war Vienna, as up-to-date as today's headlines. There's certainly drama in that subject, Libby. You know, you know, Walter Pidgeon tells me his role in this picture is one of the most powerful he's ever done. Ethel Barrymore is thrilled with the story, too, and with her part as the mother superior of a convent near Vienna. Yes, only a great actress could play the role with, with such conviction, which means that Miss Barrymore, well, she's perfectly cast in the part. I love Peter Lawford as the dashing British major. Didn't he get a grand reception when he went to the premiere in San Francisco last week? Yes, and I noticed that Janet Lee takes another step toward stardom in the Red Danube. You know, she makes a very lovely Russian ballerina. Yes, indeed. She looks the part with that delicate, almost ethereal beauty she has. Don't you think so, John? She's a charmer, Libby, especially in the close-ups. A Lux girl, of course. That's right. Janet Fine's Lux toilet soap gives her skin just the care it needs. And the new bath size cake makes a special hit with her. It's so luxurious, she says. That big bath size Lux toilet soap couldn't be finer. Lots of rich, creamy lather and a perfume screen stars love. Yes. 
It leaves such a delicate, clinging fragrance on the skin. There's something rather special about that Lux Soap perfume. Indeed there is. It's an exclusive blend of many flower fragrances. Rose, jasmine, lily of the valley are just a few. No wonder that new bath size cake is the choice of nine out of ten screen stars. And women everywhere say it makes their daily beauty bath more refreshing than ever. Have you tried this fine new product of Lever Brothers Company? You'll find the whole family will enjoy the generous bath size Lux toilet soap. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of The Emperor Waltz, starring Bing Crosby as Virgil Smith and Anne Blythe as the Countess. Well, our hero, Virgil Smith, is convinced that his sales trip to Austria is a bust. And in the Golden Fiddle Inn, he's packing up to go home. A few miles away in the Emperor's hunting lodge, disaster hovers over the royal dog kennels. Scheherazade, the French poodle, is ailing. How is she, Dr. Schweibach? Oh, my poor Scheherazade. Physically, there is nothing wrong with the Countess, but emotionally, well, this is something else again. You... You think she's upset about her wedding? It's very difficult to say. I have been psychoanalyzing her. But she never had a sick day until she had the fight with that other dog. Fight? Other dog? He's an American dog, a brown and white mongrel. His name? What was his name? Buttons. But uh, well, let's test it. She had his odd. Listen. Buttons. <laughs> Absolutely clear now. <laughs> a fear complex. Very disturbing. Isn't there a cure? We must bring the two dogs together, Scheherazade, in this uh, Buttons. Oh, but I, I've ordered Buttons' owner to leave Austria. You, you did what? That is bad, Countess, very bad. Oh, maybe it's not too late. He'll be at the inn. Don't worry, Scheherazade. I'll do everything I can. Everything. <laughs> Okay, all right. I'm leaving, I told you. I'll go on back to the police station. Let me finish. Well, well, well. Come in, Countess. <laughs> I thought it was the cops again. I'm here to demand your cooperation, Mr. Smith. Me? Help a Countess? My dog is in a state of complete collapse. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Well, the reason for Scheherazade's breakdown is fear. Oh. And the reason for her fear is your dog. Oh, no. Now, the veterinary says... Well, to put it simply, if Scheherazade could realize that Buttons is not a danger, if your dog could be nice to my dog, well... Oh, no, no. She might toss a flea on him or something. <laughs> I assure you, this is a matter of utmost importance. It goes far beyond just curing oh, a dog. So we're going to do you a favor, and then you're going to kick us out, is that it? No. No, you can stay as long as you like. I don't care. Oh, oh now you're talking sense. Let me get Scheherazade from the carriage. There's no time to waste. Oh, and see that your dog behaves. Uh, hold it, uh, Countess. Uh, there's a word missing here. I beg your pardon? The word is please. Please. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, uh. You can do better than that. Please. Come again. Please. Bring in the mutt. <laughs> Just look at them, Mr. Smith, playing like a couple of puppies. It's incredible. Well, I told you, didn't I, back in Vienna, that Buttons was a gentleman? Of course, after she hurt his feelings the way she you did, you know... You don't know, know how just... relieved I am. Why, the doctor said Shahrazad might have gone C-R-A-Z. <gasps> oh, not that. Well, <laughs> let's see what else we can do. Oh, hmm? Does Shahrazad like music? Now, there's a piano over there in the oh, corner. I think we... she'd love some music. Oh, nothing too gay, though. She mustn't become overstimulated. Oh, no, no. Well, let's see. Uh, mm, how, how's this here? Oh, that's fine. Perfect. In dreams I kiss your hand, madame. Your dainty fingertips. And while in slumberland, madame, I'm begging for your lips. 
I haven't any right, madame, to do the things I do. Just when I hold you tight, madame, you vanish with the night, madame. In dreams I kiss your hand, madame. And I pray my dreams come true. I think, uh, you know what I was thinking? Maybe a little object lesson might help, huh? Object lesson? Well, if uh, I were to kiss you like this. Oh. Well, then they might get the idea, too. Catch on? I see. Nothing personal, you understand? Oh, I, I understand perfectly. You may kiss me again, Mr. Smith. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't presume No, to... no, of course you wouldn't. Oh, look, look, she's kissing Buttons, and now Buttons is kissing her. Oh, she's cured, huh? Oh, I'm sure she is. Come, dear, we can go back now. Say goodbye, Buttons. <laughs> You've been very kind, Mr. Smith. Oh, uh... Uh, my, uh, talking machine, huh? That's any objections? Oh, no, no objections. You wouldn't happen to know when he's going hunting? Tomorrow morning. They've sighted a big stag in the glen. Well, then if I hide in the woods tomorrow morning and I bring along the phonograph... <laughs> the chances are he'd hear it. Goodbye, Mr. Smith. Well, what's the matter with you? You're telling me. <laughs> There he is, Your Majesty. What a magnificent stag. What antlers. All my life I've waited for a stag like that. Here's your rifle, Your Majesty. Look at it. Like a statue mounted on those rocks. Don't move anyone. Oh, already I can see its head mounted above Your Majesty's desk. I can't miss. Not at this distance. Quiet now. I'll take aim. Oh, no. 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 What's going on? My stag! He's gone! Incredible! Must be a band marching down the highway. I want my stag! I want my stag! Music here! Arrest them! Arrest every man in that band, especially the brass section! Oh, what a disappointment! What a tragedy! It's inhuman! I can't stand it! I can't stand it! Turn that thing off! Countess! Oh, hi, you Countess! Oh, but the emperor's here. I saw his hunting party. Hey, now, look out. Don't fool with that. You're going to scratch my record. Look out. Don't. Oh, you've scared off the emperor's stag. They're combing the, the oh, woods for Oh, well, you. he can knock off a stag any time, but an invention like oh, this... Oh, be why, quiet. This, come. Did you find that band? Not yet, Countess, but they must be here somewhere. Who is that man? You mean this man? What's he doing here? Oh, just a... Tourists picking wild strawberries. And that contraption he's got, what is it? Well, that's what I was just asking about. It's apparently for strawberries. Huh? Yeah, yeah, sure, strawberries. Show me. Well, um, well, you see this horn? You put the strawberries in here, and then you, you grind them up with this crank, you see? And the jam collects down yonder in the box. <laughs> Yeah, down in there to get the box down there to get the jam. That uh, round black thing, what does that do? Oh, you mean this rec uh, this platter? Well, this is uh, what you serve them on. And the hole in the middle, that's so the juice can run out. <laughs> Any questions? Well, I don't know. It would seem to I be... I don't that... care what it seems to you. Now go find that band. Right, I beg your pardon, Countess. Come, Fritz. Come. You put that. Oh, you're a pip, Countess, and thanks. <sighs> I'm afraid you'll have to think up another scheme for your talking machine. Yeah, I guess I will. I don't know what it's... Say, how's your hair as on? <laughs> oh, gay as a lock. Busy with her wedding plans. Oh, boy. Being trimmed, a new collar, sniffing over her wedding presents. Buttons and I, <laughs> we didn't sleep a wink last night. Couldn't eat breakfast, either. Oh, I'm so sorry. So you don't suppose that, uh, you know, whatever Scheherazade had, that, uh, could that be contagious, huh? Oh, nonsense. Buttons is a sturdy, well-adjusted little dog. I'm talking about me. I'm the, I'm the one who's got the shivers. Oh, no, really? No, don't really? laugh. I got them. One of these nights, there'll be a knock on your door, and when you open it, Buttons will be standing there with me in his arms. <laughs> Just like you were with Scheherazade. And I'll lie there quaking with my eyes rolled back until just the white is showing. And Oh, you'd have to help me then, wouldn't you? How? Well, you'd bend over me and 
Well, you remember the cure we found? You Anna! You Anna, where are you? I I have to Carlos, go. Carlos, now wait, wait a minute. Don't go. Don't you feel it too? Feel what, Mr. Smith? That funny stir inside of you. All bubbles and firecrackers and your blood all out of whack. Oh boy, right now mine's going counterclockwise. How's yours? Perfectly normal, I assure you. Goodbye, Mr. Smith. Countess, hey. Oh, well. Fat chance I'd have with a gal like that. <laughs> Say, I wonder if it would work. I throw some strawberries in the horn, I turn the... <laughs> oh, Holy Toledo, I am nuts, I guess. <laughs> Still awake, Scheherazade? Don't you know it's way past midnight? Now you listen to me. He's just an ordinary little dog like a million other little dogs. All right, he has some charm, knows a few tricks, but he's not for you, Scheherazade. He's not your sort. And tomorrow, you and the Emperor's poodle will be married. <coughs> oh, now stop crying. You're not a child, Scheherazade. You're an adult, intelligent woman with a position to maintain. Self-control, dignity. Is that too much to ask? It's no use, is it, Scheherazade? A fine pair we make. <laughs> Scheherazade, where are you going? Scheherazade, come back here. And as your royal chamberlain, sire, I find it my duty to... Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's high time you knew what was going on. Well, speak up, speak up. What's going on? Sire, it is three weeks since the Countess Joanna came here to the mountains with her dog. Well? Why do you suppose the Countess is so intent upon remaining here? Why has she not returned to Vienna? Perhaps she likes it here. She has an excellent reason, Your Highness. There's an American in the village. I've had trouble with him before, sire. Countess Joanna sees this low person every day. He dares to make love to her. Well, if it's been going on for three weeks, she can't object too strenuously. Perhaps she finds him amusing, which is more than I can say for you. Now stop this absurd gossip and let me alone. Let's not walk anymore, Virgil. Let's just sit here by the lake. You know something? Hi. If Scheherazade hadn't run away that night to find Buttons, I wouldn't be here now. Poor Buttons. <laughs> His gallop married royalty. As I shall probably do one of these days. Meanwhile, do you, do you suppose, uh, suppose I could trouble you for another kiss, honey countess? No trouble at all. I'll never forget you, Virgil. Oh, you bet you won't. Because I'm going to be around to remind you. Impertinent. Unpardonable. Ridiculous, Virgil. You can say your lips are not for me. But you can't hide the kiss that's in your eyes. And you and say my arms would only leave you cold but wait till they hold you and then look why yes and you can say tonight will come and go without a single moment's worth of sound. But why should I agree when I know what will be? It's plain to me. Plain as the kiss.
What did you mean, Virgil? You're going to be around? I thought you were going back to America. Oh, I got it all worked out, honey countess. You pack your bags, I pack mine. We get the dogs, we take the first train, the first boat. And then one day your folks are going to get a postcard from Newark, New Jersey, and it'll say, Merry Christmas. Mr. and Mrs. Virgil Homer Smith. Oh, oh, it sounds so wonderful. Isn't that great? And so impossible. Why? Don't you understand, Virgil? There'd be a scandal, and we can't afford a scandal in my family. I have a younger brother in the Imperial Military School. He'd be expelled. Well, so he'll hustle around. you get a job setting up pins in the Imperial Bowling Alley or something. He'll find something. Don't worry about it. I have a young sister. She's to be presented at court. Well, so she'll call in the neighborhood kids. Instead, she'll have herself a big taffy pull. She'll and then there's out. my father. Very bankrupt and slightly dishonest. If we should affront the emperor... Oh, the emperor again. Nobody's that important. He is, darling. Well, then why don't I go see him? Tell him how things are with us, that we're wacky about each other. He huh? wouldn't listen well, to you me. You just get me in there now. I'll reason it out with him. You don't reason with an emperor, Virgil. You simply listen to what he tells you. And what he has to say is, no. <laughs> Not me. I don't take no. I'm a salesman. A pretty good salesman, too. So I've noticed. Come on, honey countess. Let me see him. Huh? What'd he say? Come on. I'll see what I can do, Virgil. But I'm warning you now. It's no use. In other words, Mr. Smith, you're trying to tell me that you're in love with the Countess von Stolzenberg Stolzenberg. Exactly, Your Majesty, and she loves me. Oh, I know it, it sounds crazy considering who she is and where I hail from, way the other side of the tracks, but... And uh, in which one of the United States are these tracks located? New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey. My mother has a place there. An estate? Oh, no, it's a house. Well, sort of half a house, two-family deal, you know. Dr. Coleman, the dentist, he lives in the other half. Very nice fellow, Doc. You ought to see. We go bowling every night together, have a barrel of laughs. It's a great And uh, you and Joanna would live with your mother? Well, then she wouldn't be alone, you see, when, while I'm out on the road. On the road? That's right. I'm a traveling salesman. I earn $22 a week, 4% commission. That's not bad, you know, when you consider what an up-and-coming product I handle. I got it right here over... Just product, in case, you know, product. you'd like to... Oh, I that's have it. it. That, that mechanical yeah, music mm -hmm. box with which you've pursued me. Gee, I'm sorry about the stag, Your Highness. You know, of course, I'm the one made you lose him. Did you know that? No, I probably would have missed him anyway. Very poor shot. <laughs> this uh, talking machine, uh, it's really good. Good? Why, it's the gosh darnest Jim dandiest machine you ever... Listen, you... I didn't... I didn't come here to sell the machine. I... I came here to sell myself. So you wouldn't think the Countess was throwing herself away on some hoodlum, you know? But you're not a hoodlum, are you? No, no. You're a businessman. Oh, no, sure. And if a good business proposition offered itself, you wouldn't let it slip through your fingers. Oh, I should hope not, sir. It so happens I have one for you. Give up your honor, and I'll endorse your talking machine. Come again? I'm sure you heard me. Oh, now look. <laughs> I love Joanna. That's what I'm counting on. I've seen these love affairs time and again, Mr. Smith. Princes eloping with soubrettes, princesses with head waiters. Well, why not, if they love each other? Why not? Because it never lasts, never. A few short months, then unhappiness, disaster, even death. Why, in my own family... Well, is, is royalty, is, is it so much better than I, my I sort of people? I don't say that. Well, no, no. What I do say is that I know my class. Uh, mm -hmm. Take your honor with you and you destroy her. Do you want to destroy someone you love? No, I don't want to. I'm not going to. I'm going to make her happy. One chance in a million. Picture your honor in this two-family house in your uh, new walk. Oh, she still may love you, but as she dries the dishes, won't she think, tonight is the gala opening of the opera in Vienna. Last week I should have been at Ascot in the Royal Enclosure. I wonder how the season is at Biarritz. Oh, she won't think that. Because she has you. Are you enough, Mr. Smith? $22 a week with 4% commission? I, too, love your honor, and I intend to protect her. Now show me that machine of yours. Well, how does it work? In dreams I kiss your hand, madame, your dainty fingertips, 
And while in slumberland, madame, I'm begging for your lips. I haven't any right, madame, to do the things I do. Not exactly grand opera, but pleasant in its way. Just Very when pleasant. I hold you tight, madame, you vanish with the night, madame. In dreams I kiss your hand, madame, and I pray my dreams come true. going on in there, Joanna? I don't know, Father. I don't understand. Ah, this is fantastic. The impudence, taking up the Emperor's time. Maybe he's to... playing the talking machine because everything's going so well. Oh, that must be it. Yeah, he's doing it just to trick a nice old man into a sentimental mood. It's not fair. The Emperor's consented. Oh, I just know he has. Well, what happened, Virgil? What is it? What did His Majesty say? Exactly what I wanted him to say, honey countess. Oh, Virgil. And I sure want to thank you, both for myself and on behalf of the company. Oh, it's all so wonderful. What company? The phonograph company, my bosses. They'd better send you a bathtub full of roses, too. But, but why? Well, you helped swing the deal, didn't you? I sold the emperor the phonograph. From now on, it's, a, it's the same. You mean... You mean that's all you talked about? Oh, come. Come now, Countess. What's a salesman after? First, last, and all the time. A sale. Of course. And everything that happened between us, all those words, those silly dreams, all part of what you call a sales campaign. I, I had a hunch you'd be a little sore, but you couldn't have taken it seriously. Gee, a Countess and a traveling salesman were... I guess I'm terribly stupid. Well, you're a very good salesman indeed. The company thinks so. They, they send me on all these tough assignments. This one wasn't so tough now, was it? No hard feelings, huh? No feelings at all. It's just funny, isn't it? Well, it's not half as funny as the idea of me, me, Virgil Smith, taking a life-size Countess back to Newark. <laughs> so long, Countess. Thanks for everything. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, we'll continue with the third act of The Emperor Waltz. It's always a pleasure to see a promising young player get ahead, and we're glad to welcome Randy Stewart of 20th Century Fox. I understand you've been very busy at the studio since your last visit to the Lux Radio Theater, Randy. Mm, yes, I have, Mr. Cately, and I love it. You learn something new every day, you know. For instance, I never realized before the drama there is in the trucking business. Obviously, you've been seeing the new Fox picture, Thieves Highway. The story of those long-haul trucks that travel by night. Mm, and the danger and adventure they meet en route. With Richard Conti heading the cast, there's plenty of action. Yes, he's a forceful player. And so is the new Italian discovery, Valentino Corteza, who plays his sweetheart. Barbara Lawrence turns in a grand performance, too, in Thieves Highway. You know, there's a young player with real ability. Very easy on the eyes, too. <laughs> I should say so. And I think Mr. Kennedy will be glad to know that she's an ardent Lux girl. Why, she even took a supply of her favorite beauty soap on location with her. That was a smart idea. But then screen stars wouldn't be without Lux Toilet Soap for daily beauty care. And they love the big new bath size cake, Mr. Kennedy. It makes such a refreshing bath, wonderful for a quick pickup after a day on the set. Yes, that new bath cake is a winner everywhere. It's generous in size and so convenient to use. And the perfume it leaves on your skin is just what women like. Reminds me of spring flowers. Thanks, Miss Randy Stewart, for coming tonight. And now, here's a hint for canny shoppers. Put the new bath-size Lux Toilet Soap on your list tomorrow. 
The whole family will appreciate it. Here's your producer, Mr. Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of The Emperor Wall, starring Bing Crosby as Virgil Smith and Anne Blythe as the Countess. It's a few months later now, and Virgil Smith's talking machines, endorsed by the Emperor, have taken Vienna by storm. There's a ball in the palace tonight, and an uninvited guest has managed to crash the royal gate. He's found the Countess Johanna and hustled her off to an anteroom. Let go of my arm. Countess, come, please. Now, you don't think I'd have come here at all, do you, if it wasn't a matter of life and death? Whatever your reason, Mr. Smith, I am not interested. I don't think my father is either. And if he should find look, you... Look, look, now, after tonight, you'll never see me again. I promise you. We're ready to go home. Only Buttons will never make it. He's sick. He'll never live to see Newark again, unless you help us. No. Now, let me get back to the boat. He's out there in the carriage. Poor little fella, all bundled up. You ought to see him. Just a little rack of bones. Last night, he dragged himself out of the hotel. You know where I found him? In front of your house. Looking for Scheherazade. I'm extremely sorry. I rang the bell, and your servants told me Scheherazade was here at the palace. And she can't be disturbed. What are you trying to do, Countess? You're trying to take it out on him for something I did? Buttons isn't a businessman. He isn't working any angles. All Buttons did was to lose his fool heart, that's all. One doesn't die of a lost heart, Mr. Smith. Except in those syrupy songs the chambermaids play on your phonograph. Well, let him see her just once more, huh? Come on. Just for a minute. Just so the poor little dog can begin to breathe again. I'll go out there and get him, huh? What I'm expected back in the ballroom, Mr. Smith, and that's just where I'm going. I forgot the word, baby, huh? Please. Please. You are not. Where have you been? What is it, Father? The Emperor just went to the kennel. Scheherazade's puppies. They'll be born at any moment now. Well, aren't you coming? Yes, Father, of course. Oh, Buttons. Now, how'd you get in here? I thought I told you to wait out there and stay covered up. Oh, you just... <laughs> you just gotta see Scheherazade. Is that it? Well... Oh, boy, I never wanted to tell you this, but... I guess I'll have to. Seems that she and the Emperor's poodle, well, Button, she's about to present him with a family. Sorry, fella, but that's the way it is. Now do you give up? Right, right, right. Button. Button's here. Here now. Come back here. Here now. Wait a minute. Button. Here, boy. Well, any news in there? It will be a little while yet, Your Majesty. If you'll excuse me, I'll stay with Scheherazade. Of course, my dear, of course. What a relief, General, when this is all over. Now, what shall I call the puppies? Let me see. Oh, they'll be black, of course. Yes. Uh, jet black, like their mother and father. I uh, have a few suggestions, Your Highness. Huh? Uh, for the firstborn, Othello. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> for the second, Café Noir. If he's very small... Demitas. <laughs> yes, and, and if it's a female, Sheba. Ah? Queen of Sheba, you know, she was dark. Inspired, Your Majesty, simply inspired. Oh, if I could only stay here, but I can't, not with a palace full of guests. You will remain, General. Let me know the moment the puppies arrive. Oh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So this is where you are, Buttons, huh? Well, those are the royal kennels, that's right. Scheherazade must be in there, but... Oh, she's a pretty busy lady right now. I guess all we can do is just walk the floor out here. Who is it? Who is that? The Emperor. Why, uh, it's just Buttons and me, Your Highness. Me, you remember? Virgil Smith with the music box. What are you doing here? Well, as, uh... Yeah, what am I... Well, I, I came to see Dr. Schweibach. Uh, Buttons here has really got the miseries, and I understand that uh, Dr. Schweibach's got something in there that might, might do him a world of good. He's I... the best veterinarian in Austria, but you'll have to wait. He's very busy right now. Oh, we'll wait, Your Highness. Easy, Buttons. Easy, boy, now. We'll see her yet. <laughs> Don't worry. Just stick with me. Well, Zybach, what is it? Don't just stand there staring at me. The puppies, General. They've arrived? Well, what's wrong? Come in this room and look. There, in the little basket. Well, now, that's more like... No. No, I refuse to believe my eyes. Three puppies, brown and white. Each of them... That blasted black Jezebel! Oh, stop shouting, Father! That dog can't do this to me! She seems to have done it anyway. These puppies are the image of buttons. The Emperor, this will break his heart. It could ruin me! 
Uh, nevertheless, he must be told at once. You honor, you'll come with me. Yes, perhaps I'd better be a good mama, Scheherazade. I'll be back later. Zwyback, come here. Yes, yes. I shall tell the emperor that the puppies were born dead. Then he won't want to see them. Good, good. What shall I do with them? Father, I'm waiting. I'll be right there. You will drown them at once. General, you I... heard me. Drown them. That's an order. Three puppies, you say, General, and all black, eh? Black as coal, I wager. Well, I shall go to them at once. I... I don't think you should see them. What's that? Uh, great grief has befallen us, Your Majesty. Uh, Your Honor was too upset to face you with me, sire. The puppies, they were born dead. Dead? Such an ugly word. How is Scheherazade? Uh, quite well. She'll give you puppies yet, Your Highness. Come spring, you may count on another litter. The question is, can I count on another spring? Now go. Go. Your Majesty. Well, Your Honor, you heard what I told him. Do you think it's wise to lie to His Majesty? I thought I handled it very well. Anyway, I didn't lie. The puppies are dead. I ordered Zweibach to drown them. You... you didn't. You couldn't have. Let them live. Run the risk of him finding out. <laughs> now stop acting so tragic and get back to the ballroom. Hi. No. Hey, uh, can we come in, Doc? Oh, I hope it's not past visiting hours. Who are you? Get out of here. Oh, yeah. Just a minute. You're being a little rude, aren't you? This little gentleman here is a close friend of the family. Who's <laughs> that? There you are, Buttons. There's your hair's on. Nobody's allowed in here. Now get out. Well, what about the pups? Where are... Hey. Hey, what are you filling that pail for? Stay away from there. The orders have been given. What orders? Now give me those pups. Well, they're in the basket there, but you can't... Stop! Stop! Come back! Ladies and gentlemen, His Majesty, the Emperor, Franz Josef. Just a second, just a second, Your Majesty. What? Wait a minute now. Before you tell these people that the dance can go on, I got a little something to tell you. What? what? I got the puppies, you see, and you're not going to kill them. Just what are you trying to tell me? They're not pure enough for you, not good enough, huh? Freaks. Little brown and white mongols that you wouldn't have around. So what are you going to do? You're going to shake them off that great big noble family tree of yours and let them rot. As if nothing had ever happened. Exactly what is in that basket, Mr. Scheherazade's pups. And you know it. General von Stolzenberg. Well, it, 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 it seemed wiser, Your Majesty. I, I didn't want to shock you. Uh... Let me see them, Mr. Smith. Yeah. And as my hearing is not impaired, please stop shouting at me. Well... I want to get my two cents worth in before you started talking. Last time, like a chump, I kept my mouth shut, and what did you do? You sold me a bill of goods about the wrong side of the tracks, and a lot of guff about me not being good enough. Are we discussing the Countess Joanna or the contents of this basket? Well, it amounts to the same thing, only now I know, with your very kind permission, sir, that you're full of cracked ice. <laughs> Maybe I was to fall for it and walk out and make a heel out of myself. Virgil, Virgil, will you say that again, please? Slowly and plainly and simply. I sure will, honey, Countess. But later. Your Majesty, please. Was it me that you made him give up? Your Honor, we, we both agreed that with him you had only one chance in a million to be happy. Does Your Majesty think I am happy? Isn't one chance in a million better than no chance at all? Oh, my dear, you're much too pretty for mathematics. Look at those puppies. Look, they're all boys. <laughs> sure. Boys running Button's family. This tiny one has a bite like a <laughs> nutcracker. <laughs> oh, and they're so Shoppers sweet, Your on. Majesty. They'll be the strongest, the smartest, the funniest Yeah, and little... between Buttons and me, we'll bring them up right when we get them back home, too. There's no fooling around with these. Can I have them? Give me the Indeed, you me cannot the... have them, no. Why should you have Buttons and Scherzard and the puppies? Maybe we could leave one for His Majesty. The one who seems so attached to his finger. Oh, sure, that sounds like a good deal to me. You know what I'm going to do? Yes? I'm going to withdraw that remark about the cracked ice. Well, thank you very much, but I'm keeping them all, nevertheless. Oh, now, now yeah. leave me alone. Go on, dance, all of you. Uh, Your Majesty, if I may. You may not. I'll settle with you later. Virgil, the people, they're all staring at good, us. Good, good. I got something to tell you. You too, honey, Countess, and the people. Love is a dream, yet it's so real. 
hard to explain just how you feel deep in your heart joy seems to dwell like poets say it's perfectly swell Love is a dream, yet it's so real, hard to explain just how you feel. Deep in your heart, joy seems to dwell, like poets say, it's perfectly swell. Your applause calls tonight's stars back to the footlights. Here they are for a curtain call. Bing Crosby and Ann Blythe. You know, you both gave delightful performances. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. Take a bow, Countess. Oh, sure, and it's very kind of you, sirs, to say such nice things. Uh, the Countess is an old friend of Barry Fitzgerald's, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> well, sir, now, you know, it's just that I work so long with you and Barry on top of the morning. Paramount will adore you for saying that. <laughs> So you just get to talking that way, eh? Ah, that's right. You might say it's a habit like that wonderful bath-sized Lux soap. Oh, you can't beat Lux. There's nothing you can beat. Oh, you're so right. It's a grand soap. Aye, and she's one of our loveliest Lux girls. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. You know, I've been reading all about the Lux Radio Theater's 15th anniversary in Look magazine. The pictures are very interesting, especially one taken in 1937 of one of our older singing stars as he appeared here. Well, Jolson in print again. You know, you can't keep old Jolie down. He oh, keeps oh. popping up. <laughs> Bing, this was a picture of you. Yeah. Very handsome, too. Me? And look. Must have been Al Dexter or somebody. Oh. <laughs> What's the show next week, Bill? <laughs> it's very timely, Bing. Next week, the World Series begins. And next Monday night, we'll celebrate baseball's big week with a fast-moving baseball comedy. It's the 20th Century Fox picture. It happens every spring. We'll have the original star of the picture, Ray Milland. And with Ray, the lovely Colleen Townsend. A delightful romantic play for the whole family's entertainment next Monday. Well, I'll have to scout that line up for the Pittsburgh Pirates. So long, Bill. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night, and thank you both. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening. And the Lux Radio Theater presents Ray Milland and Colleen Townsend in It Happens Every Spring. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Anne Blythe appeared by arrangement with Samuel Goldwyn, producer of Rosanna McCoy. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear It Happens Every Spring, starring Ray Milland and Colleen Townsend. And listen in next Sunday night to hear America's famous comedy team, Amos and Andy, when they return to the air over most of these stations. Spry is a new spry, a better than ever spry. You'll be a better cook when you use spry. Spry in your baking pan, spry in your frying pan. You'll be a better cook when you use spry. Talk about glorious cakes. They're better than ever made with new spry. Lighter, finer, richer, supremely delicious. Why? Because new spry contains a superior new cake improver you'll find in no other type of shortening. For better cakes than ever and for all you bake and fry, Try new, better than ever Spry, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. You'll be a better cook when you use Spry. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of It Happens Every Spring, starring Ray Milland and Colleen Townsend. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.